Hey there, future dietitians. My name is Nikki Kendrick. I'm a registered dietitian and faculty of an Ascend accredited graduate program at Utah State University. I've worked as a clinical dietitian in acute care environments, and now in my role as an educator, I've helped hundreds of students complete their clinical rotations. This experience is key to your growth as a professional, and in this video, I have some tips to help you make the most of it. The first tip that I have is to gather your resources. Your supervised practice program or even your clinical facility where you complete rotations will have resources for you, but it doesn't hurt to know what else is out there and available to you. Here are some of my favorites. The first is the Nutrition Care Manual from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. This online reference is comprehensive and reliable. It is an evidence-based resource with information about specific conditions, diet education handouts, and other tools that you can use to provide excellent patient care and learn more. The next resource are pocket guides from the Academy. The Academy publishes a variety of pocket guides to help practitioners from novice to expert keep the most current guidelines and standards at their fingertips. The pocket guides range from general topics like nutrition assessment, micronutrient assessment, but also nutrition-focused physical exams or specific things like chronic kidney disease. If you know you will be working with a specific population during your rotations, consider looking into one of these pocket guides. The next resource is textbooks. If you rented or shared textbooks in your undergraduate degree, now is the time to purchase your own textbooks. You should have a medical nutrition therapy textbook, a community nutrition textbook, and a food service management textbook. Your program faculty will have some recommendations for you if you're unsure of what to purchase. Textbooks are another trustworthy source of information when you need to learn more about a specific medical condition or treatment. The internet has a lot of really great information at our fingertips, but textbooks have been compiled by experts. If you're still not convinced, Having a set of textbooks will really be worth every penny when you start studying for the RD exam. Every single question on the RD exam is written from the textbooks that your preceptors and your faculty recommend. My last but not least favorite resource is the DNS YouTube channel, the very channel that you are watching this video on. This is another great resource to help you prepare for rotations. The videos on this channel cover nutrition support calculations, enteral formula selection, the management of specific conditions. The DNS YouTube channel is a wealth of information. You can also check out other academy practice groups that match your interests. They're great for networking and specialized learning. Now that you have your resources, you should start reviewing some of these topics. Medical terminology and common abbreviations. Being comfortable with medical language and the terms that you will hear in the hospital makes reviewing medical records easier and improves your comprehension during conversations with your preceptor and other clinicians. Review reference standards for lab results and human anatomy. Reviewing common laboratory results and their normal ranges will be very helpful. If you can recognize the normal ranges, it will help you identify abnormal results more quickly. Don't forget to review human anatomy and the specific terms. Just like reviewing medical terminology, recognizing anatomy will help you deepen your understanding of medical nutrition therapy without having to review the basics first. My next tip is to review common nutrition calculations. Make sure you know how to calculate BMI without a BMI calculator online. Make sure you know how to convert pounds to kilograms, inches to centimeters, ounces to milliliters, and other conversion factors. Your preceptors want to spend time helping you develop your clinical judgment and problem solving, not how to complete basic math calculations. If you need to make yourself a cheat sheet, go ahead and do that. My next tip is to review medical nutrition therapy for common conditions. Focus on things like diabetes, heart disease, chronic kidney disease. You could even look into warfarin and vitamin K. Think about what do you know about the basic foods that are restricted on a renal diet? Do you know the basic foods that are lactose-free? Patients might ask you that on the fly, and it's really helpful if you know those, the answers to those questions. If someone asked you about allergens on the hospital menu, do you know where to find the information? If you know a little bit of this before, it'll be a lot easier to handle those things when they come up in your rotations. Your preceptors don't expect you to know all of these things on your first day, 
but if you have a general idea of these topics, your preceptors will understand where you're starting from and be able to provide you with the resources that you need and help you get the most out of your rotation. My next tip is to refresh your understanding of the nutrition care process. Whether your hospital uses ADIME notes or SOAP notes, being well-versed in the nutrition care process will help you organize your thoughts in your chart notes and deliver excellent patient care. The Academy has helpful tutorials and one-page tip sheets to help you improve your understanding and confidence with this. So I wanna encourage you to think about how you will take notes during your rotations. A small notebook that you can carry with you every day is ideal. It's professional and keeps you focused during any interaction that you have. Phones, while they're useful, can be distracting. When you're with patients and you're typing something up on your phone, a patient doesn't know if you're paying attention to them or if you're texting or doing something different. But when you have a piece of paper or a notebook and a pen and you're writing down everything, it's pretty obvious to the patient that you're paying attention to them and really focused on that interaction. In, with my students, I provide them with a booklet that has some guidelines and nutrition reference standards so that they have those at the ready, but it also has a few blank pages at the back. They can take this with them to their rotations, and as questions come up, they can write them down to ask their preceptor later, and as their preceptor shares information with them, they can write that down for reference in the future. Let's switch gears and talk a little bit about our mindset and our mental preparation for rotations. Your attitude during rotations will make a huge difference in how much you learn and what you get out of this experience. So here are my tips to set yourself up for success. Establish a routine. Routines are crucial for managing stress and staying organized. Make sure you're getting enough sleep, planning your meals, and scheduling time for studying and your personal life. A solid routine supports your overall well-being and success. If you haven't heard it already, your rotations are one really long job interview. You wanna make a good impression by being prepared and ready to learn each day. Be curious. Take the initiative to ask questions. Whether it's why a specific enteral formula was chosen or trying to understand more about your preceptor's decision process, showing curiosity demonstrates your eagerness to learn and engage in the process. Your preceptors will respond to your questions and be able to provide you a richer experience when they know how much you want to learn and what you want to learn. If asking questions doesn't come naturally to you, practice. Let your preceptors know that it's a skill you're trying to build and they can help you. Next, number three, be teachable. Don't shy away from feedback. There will be days where it feels like you aren't getting anything right. Your preceptor is picking apart every single one of the notes that you write. But being open to correction is essential for growth and helps you build those mentorship relationships. Professionals who recognize early on that there is always something to learn, something to be improved, are more likely to stay engaged with their job and be satisfied with their career. There's always something new to learn. And honestly, I think that's pretty exciting. You'll never be bored if you're always focused on learning. Be brave. Clinical rotations can be intense and sometimes overwhelming. The hospital is not the easiest place for everyone to be. The hospital is fast paced and you might not always have time to prep before you see a patient. You're going to be asked to learn a lot of new things. Terms will be thrown out that you've never heard before. You have to build rapport with people that you've never talked to and it's all in a short period of time. However, you have multiple chances every single day to practice new skills. If you mess up with one patient, you'll have another opportunity with the next. So embrace every single chance that you get as an opportunity to learn and grow. If you take the chance to step outside your comfort zone, you will grow. You'll also surprise yourself with how well you can handle new and challenging situations. Practice positive self-talk. Take time to acknowledge your achievements and the skills you're developing. It's easy to be self-critical, especially when you're learning something new. However, reflect on your progress and stay positive. If you're having a hard time recognizing your own improvement and what you're doing well, ask your preceptors and they can tell you. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to these tips for success in your clinical rotations. You are on the brink of an exciting and challenging phase in your education and your future career. I hope you find these tips useful as you prepare and remember to enjoy the learning process. You've got this.
best of luck on your journey.